Hi, this is Matt with AppliancePartsPros.com. Today we'll be showing you how to repair your appliance. Remember, anytime you work on an appliance, make sure it's unplugged or the circuit breakers are off so there's no chance of electrocution. In this video, we're going to show you how to change out the KitchenAid mixer or transmission housing. It's going to be a very easy repair and it's only take a few minutes to show you how to do it. If you already have one of these, great. If not, you can click on the link below or get it at AppliancePartsPros.com. When you open up the package, you're going to get the new gasket and transmission housing. The transmission housing covers up the gears in the mixer. The main reason you'll be changing it out is if it's cracked or damaged and grease is leaking out. In order to change the part, we have to open up the mixer. We're going to take off the accessories just to get them out of the way. You want to make sure the bowl is in the down position. And then we can reach in and take off the beater. All you have to do is lift up on it, turn it clockwise, and then let it drop down. You can pull it out. To get the bowl up, we're just going to lift it off the mounting pegs and pull it out. Now we're around at the back of the mixer. We're going to use a Phillips screwdriver to take out the screw that holds the trim on. Once you have the screw out, you can pull the trim off and set it aside. With the trim out of the way, we can use a Phillips screwdriver to take out the four screws that hold the cover on. There's two on this side and two on the other side. Once you have all four screws out, you can lift the cover off and set it aside. Now that we have the cover off, we can use the Phillips screwdriver to take out the two screws that hold the speed control board in place. Once you have both screws out, we're going to lift the board up and out of the way. We have to use a small flathead screwdriver to release the tabs that hold the little sensor in. Just have to press on each side and get them to release. Once you have both tabs released, you can pull the sensor out of the motor and then we can swing the speed control out of the way. Now we're going to use the Phillips screwdriver to take out the four screws that hold down the transmission housing. Once you have all four screws up, you can carefully lift the transmission housing off. Once you have it off, we can pull out the hub attachment gear. All you have to do is push it into the housing and lift it out. Once you have it out, you can just set it aside so we can put it into the new housing. Now that we have the hub attachment gear off, when we took ours off, we noticed that our bearing came out of the housing. So if yours is stuck on the shaft like ours was, you want to take it off and just throw it into the old housing. The new one comes with it, so you don't need that. And we're going to take as much grease out of this old housing as we can and just put it on the gears so that when we put the new housing back on, it has enough grease. If your old housing was leaking a lot, you can always take about two ounces of new grease and put it directly onto the gears before you put the new housing on. Once you have as much grease out as you can get, you can pull the old transmission housing off the mixer. Here's the old transmission housing next to the new one. If you already have one of these, great. If not, you can get it at AppliancePartsPros.com. Looks like they redesigned the transmission housing. It's made out of metal now, and it also comes with a gasket. The gasket has an adhesive side on it, and you have to stick that onto the transmission housing. So we're just going to peel off the paper and stick it on. Once you have the gasket on, we can put the transmission housing onto the mixer. If you're replacing the old style plastic housing, you have to look at these holes on each side where the locating pins go. In our case, they broke off and they're stuck in the holes. And this one has a little bit of a flange on it, so we can get underneath it and get it with a razor blade. But the one on the other side doesn't have that, so we're going to have to drill that out. If you have to drill out one of your locating pins, you want to put a little shield 
to protect the grease. You don't want any of the particles going into the grease. Once you have the shield in there, we're going to grab a drill and an 11 30 seconds bit, and we're going to carefully drill that out. Once you have it drilled out, you can clean up the area and the whole lip around the transmission housing and get any grease off of it so we can put the new housing on. Before we put the new transmission housing in, we have to put the hub attachment gear in. All you have to do is set it into place. It should still be greased up from when you took it out. Once you have the gear in, all you have to do is line up the housing and turn it over, set it down into place. If the housing doesn't go down all the way, you may have to turn the hub gear a little bit in order to get the teeth to line up so the housing goes down all the way. Once you have it in place, we can use the filled screwdriver to put the screws in. Now that we have the new transmission housing installed, we can lift up the speed control and put it back in position. Once you have the board in place, we can use a Phillips screwdriver to put in the screws. Once you have the screws tightened down, we can plug the sensor back in. All you have to do is grab the sensor and plug it into the motor. It can only go in one way. Just line it up and push it down so it locks into place. Once you have that in place, we can put the top back on. To put the top on, all you have to do is line it up, set it into place. Once you have it down, we can use a Phillips screwdriver to put the screws in. Now that we have the cover back on, we can put the trim ring on. We're just going to set it in place, and we can go around back and use the Phillips screwdriver to put the screw in to hold it on. Once you have the trim ring on, we can put the bowl back on. To put the bowl back on, I'm just going to line up the pins on each side. Once you have it in place, you can push down on the back to snap it in. Once you have it in place, we can put the beater back on. To put the beater back in, we're just going to line it up on the shaft and uh, make sure the pin goes into the cutout and lift it up into place. Turn it counterclockwise to lock it on. Once you have it in place, we can plug the mixer back in and take it for a spin. Thanks for joining us for another successful repair brought to you by AppliancePartsPros.com. Check out our other repair videos on our site, Facebook, and YouTube.